بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أعوذ بكلمات الله تامات من شر ما خلق بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله جزاك الله خير for everyone who is here um, thank you to uh, MCC and Miftah for making this happen جزاك الله خير for the hard work of all the brothers and sisters at Mifta, uh, Brother Mufti Abdul Wahab especially. May Allah bless all of you and protect you and increase you. Um, we are on the third of the uh, fourth week of Saadi, the Gulistan of Saadi, uh, which is a book of wisdom and reality, a book of teaching of uh, the great Persian Gnostic uh, master of Kalam. Of, and also he was, he was known as Wordsmith. Uh, because he had such a uh, eloquence in his in his language, uh, very precise and meaningful and beautiful at the same time. So uh, one of the thing about uh, words are that a lot of time when people speak, it goes through our ears and we we hear things uh, and we listen to things. But sometimes when people speak, it actually goes straight to our hearts, and those are the words that that has meaning in our lives. And when, when somebody says something and it affects you spiritually, not just through your ear, but it, it affects you uh, spiritually and you get this awakening through these words because the words that rise from the heart enters the heart. The words that comes from the mouth, it, it doesn't pass the ears. And these people, if you look at their lives, they were like the, the, the honeybee. It takes so long for it but once they're ready, it just comes out. And it, everything comes out from the heart of the human being and goes into the hand and into the pen. And for some, it doesn't even go to the hand and the pen. It just comes out from the tongue and other people write it because they're all already in a state of complete love and, and just love of Allah and the messenger that they don't even have the, the ability in those moments to write it. Like Mawlana Jalaluddin Rumi, who didn't write anything of the Masnavi except the first 18 lines. The 26,000 lines of the Masnavi was written by his students as he eloquently just said uh, those lines, proclaimed them, and just uh, recited those lines. So he, Sa'adi, rahmatullah alayhi, his words are in reality words from his heart. And he, uh, one of the things that, that words that comes from the heart is it's not fake, it's not phony. It's not a lecture you prepare and say, I want to say this in order. There are, there are signs of, of uh, speech where you learn that you know exactly when people are going to clap. You know exactly when people, so you, and they, they say those lines and they have a pause in that moment because they know the clap is going to come next. It's, a, it's an art and anybody, if you have the time and, and people want to do that, they can learn that science, which is a waste of time because, again, you're doing it you're doing it for the clap. And this is one of the things in our religion is jaza and wifaqa. On the day of judgment, whatever you do, for whatever intention you did that for, that's what you get. So I give an example. If you donate money in order for people to say, oh, what a rich man and generous man he is. He just donated a lot of money. On the day of judgment, when you want your reward from Allah, Allah says, no, you didn't donate for me. You donated it for the people who can, they, they would say, oh, what a generous person he or she is. And they said that about you. So what do you want from me? You got your reward because you wanted it. So the same thing with a person who goes to the battlefield, the mujahid. He says, I'm going to go to the battlefield so they can say what a great warrior I am. So on the day of judgment, he says, Ya Allah, I give you my life. He says, no, no, you didn't, give, you, you didn't give me your life. You gave you a life for this act that everybody says what a what a warrior that man is so everybody said what a warrior that man is so what do you want from me jaza and we follow. you got your reward already from the people so they didn't write their books to be bestsellers but allah makes things bestsellers right so every hadith uh, scholar they write a book called the arba'in the 40 hadith there's so many arba'in 40 hadith uh, that's been written in the history of islam there's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, whoever learned 40 hadith and practices that, he'll be with me in paradise. It's a beautiful thing to memorize 40 hadith and practice those hadith. 
So that's one of the reasons why a lot of scholars write the, the Arba'in, the 40 hadith. Now if you look at the history of Islam, what probably hundreds if not thousands of Arba'in was written, 40 hadith. There's only one Arba'in of Imam Nawawi that just goes generation after generation after generation. It gets translated into like Persian and Urdu and French and German and English and Russian. All these languages and it still keeps going, right? When you say, we say Arba'in, say Arba'in and Nawawiya. The Imam Nawawi is 40 hadith. Why is that? There's a Kabul in that. He didn't do it to be the bestseller, but Allah made it the bestseller. Because his intention was for Allah. I want to do this for Allah and for the love of Allah and his messenger. So these people, when they wrote their poetry, they actually wrote it in order to, because they had so much love. And you can see that love in the poetry. There's a man, a beautiful man. He was not a Muslim in Punjab. And he, in, as, if, as you all know, in India, and in, uh, was modern day Pakistan in India, they used to study Saadis Gulistan and Bostan as a, as a textbook, not as a book of poetry. And this is one of the, the, the tragedies of our time that we study these as, as poems. But they didn't study as a poem, they studied as a book of uh, uh, philosophy, they studied as books of politics, they studied as books of akhlaq and ethics, because all of those are in these books. They're trying to teach lessons through their stories, and inshallah we'll get to some stories today from the Gulistan. But this man was reading, he was not a Muslim, he was a Hindu. And he was reading the, the Bostan of Sa'adi. And the Bostan of Sa'adi starts with a, uh, with a beautiful praise of Allah and his messenger. So he's reading this, and it's in his biography, biography and, and, I, and I have, and he's really an amazing uh, man. Uh, and, and then uh, his, his, uh, his, I think his great granddaughter is still, uh, that's the one that, I got a copy from their library that has his note on the book, a photocopy of it. Uh, one of the beautiful people in, in Pakistan, uh, they, they saw that, they, they sent it to me. But anyways, he, he reads this poem, and so he, he's, he's studying this book. So he reads the Gulistan, he comes to this line on the praise of the Prophet Sallallahu and he keeps reading and reading. And he said, when I got to this one line, my tongue keep repeating the same line over and over again. When I got to this one line, it's like, you know, when the CDs get stuck and they just keep repeating, they go in a loop. He said, my tongue went in a loop and I couldn't go to the next line. I couldn't move to the next line. And I keep repeating this and I keep repeating this. And this is the line where Saadi says, Mahola Saadi's Kerahi Safa. He says, Sa'adi says, and he says to himself, and this is one of the things that when the poet give an example and they use their own name, Iqbal does that all the time, uh, you know, Hafiz does that, Sa'adi does that, Mawlana Rumi does that. All of the poets, they use their own name, right? So he says, O oh, Sa'adi, right? In other words, I'm giving this advice to myself. It's the greatest advice, so take it. If it was bad, I wouldn't give it to myself. He says, O oh, Sa'adi, it is impossible to be on a path that is pure. It's impossible to be on a path that is pure because the path that's pure would lead you to a place that is pure. Al Jannah Nazif, paradise is pure, it's clean and pure. And you have to have this path of purity to get there. You can't be on the path of Khubas of filth and, in, in, and expect to be in paradise. No, each one has a road. Paradise has a road and hellfire has a road. So he's saying, Sa'adi's saying, if you want to go to this perfect place, right, a place of beauty and perfection, it is impossible to go except to walk in the footstep of Muhammad al-Mustafa. That is impossible. To get to paradise, to be with Allah, to be on the path of purity, is impossible. Mahal as Saadi is impossible as Saadi. No way that you will find this path except you walk in the footstep of Muhammad al Mustafa. So this man said, My tongue started to get into a loop, and I couldn't go to the next line. 
And I keep saying this line, keep saying, and he breaks down. And he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah. So he becomes a Muslim, and then he became, he goes on the path of learning and spirituality. And his name is now, uh, his name was uh, Baba Shami. He has a big shrine in Punjab, and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people go visit his shrine. And he had thousands of students and become a big, big scholar. He has a book, the Maktuba, he has letters. Uh, beautiful uh, book. Um, so become a big, big scholar and, and, a, and a spiritual master as well. But that was all from this one line of Saadi's Gulistan. So people have been affected. We talked about uh, Lazar Karnat in the first session about this Frenchman who reads the Gulistan of Saadi in the seven, in the 1600s, and he uh, uh, he names his son Saadi Karnat. And then his, his son passed away at age 25. He names another son, Saadi Karnat, who becomes the president of France. And they, you know, in the history of, of France, they have a president named Saadi Karnat. And Saadi, it says, named after the famous Persian uh, poet and spiritual master. So, uh, alhamdulillah, these people had an effect because these words were not simply written to be famous or written to be get, get an award. But it was, they were written because they had immense love for Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Saadi, we will, uh, for the sake of time, uh, we will start uh, the Gulistan on the first Bab. Bab is a chapter, and uh, in, in they say Bab Awal that Sirat Shahan. The first Bab, the first chapter, Sirat is obviously is the same word we use for like Sirat al Nabawi. Or when we have books of life of the Prophet it's so he's talking about the seerah of the kings. So he's going to give us uh, what should be the akhlaq of the king. Uh, this is a uh, this is a formula for how to be a leader, because each person is a king, but they're unaware of it. We are the king of our home. If you're a father, you're the king of your home, and everybody's your citizen, your, your wife and your children. And your, so you have to take care of him. So how do you do that? If you're a minister, you're a king. If you're a governor, you're the king of that, that state, right? You're a, if you're a mayor, you're the king of that city. So there's, there's level. So his advice is not just for the king as a padsha or badsha or, 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 a, or a real king or a president, but it, it goes from the top all the way to the bottom. All of them, how to deal with, uh, with, with this situation that will come to you. So he starts with uh, the Hikayah number one. We'll start for the Barakah. We'll start the first story from the Gulistan uh, in chapter one uh, of, on the, uh, the characteristics of the kings. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Padshahi ra shenidam ke bakushtan asiri isharat ka. This is, he said, I tell you a story I heard about this king who had a, uh, someone, who, Asir is a prisoner. We talked about it in the first session. So he, the, the king's just, you know, Ishara is indication. So a lot of the kings, they say, go ahead and kill him. Go ahead and put him in prison. They just have symbols. They just go like that, right? So he does the Ishara and then like that, get rid of him. So he's, whatever he did, I don't know. Maybe he was guilty. Maybe it was dead treason. So there was something that he did that, right? The king. Bichara daran halat noomidi malik ra dashnam dadan girif wa sakat guftan. This bichara, obviously, bichara is the universal word now. Everybody knows. Uh, this devastated poor man in this hall. Uh, Saadi says in this hall of of hopelessness, right? So here's a man who's standing there. The king says, kill him. He, okay, end of my life. He's just hopeless. There is no hope. Hope is what makes us, gives us sanity. Hope is what makes us go forward. Hope is what makes us eloquent. Hope is what makes us beautiful. Because you have hope that things will change, right? But now he has no hope. It's done. The king already commanded that he should be killed. So at this point, he became hopeless. He started cussing out the king. He just started saying foul words. Whatever it came out of his mouth, he just said it to the king. که گفتن هر که دست از جان بشوید هر چه در دل دارد بگوید and Saadi says there's a famous proverb everybody all these wise men said whoever's life is over 
whatever is in their heart comes on their tongue. They can't be a monophic at this time to say, oh, thank you, king, you're amazing. No, I'm just going to say you're horrible, you're this, you're that, whatever comes out. I'm, you're going to kill me, so why should I be nice to you, right? In my heart, I hate you, and I'm going to say I hate you. So then he, he writes a poem to explain this further. That was a prose, and this is the poem. That's called Nasr Musajja. A, a, a prose that actually has some type of rhyme and beauty in it. وقت ضرورت چو نماند گریز دست بگیرد سر شمشیر تیز At the time of darura and darura is when uh, in necessity so we have darura in like for example if you're starving to death right and there's no food it becomes darura like okay and then there's things that are haram for you to eat becomes halal right because your life is more important right the preservation, preservation of life is the first thing that Sharia comes, right? To preserve life. Maqasid is Sharia, one of the five maqasid. One is the preservation of life. So in that time, you can eat pork, which is haram. But you don't eat to save to, to, to the fullest. You eat enough that you keep yourself alive, right? In, until you get to, to real food. So this is daruri. So he's saying, so this is the time of when it becomes daruri time, like essential, just desperation time. He said, your hand will catch the swords if it comes towards you. So if somebody's coming with a sword on your head, you will catch it with your hand because you'd rather lose your hand than lose your head, right? So that's what he's saying. إِذَا يَئِسَ الْإِنسَانُ طَالَ لِسَانُهُ Kasinu, uh, this is the, the, should be a kasra on that, not a fatha. Yeah, kasinuri maghlubin yasulu ala al-kalbi. So, uh, that should be a kasra. Uh, Sudi said it's a kasra, so I, I trust him more because he's a grammarian on his sharh. Uh, but this, the, uh, the other uh, books, they have it as, as a fatha. So, this Arabic line, it says, when people become, uh, they have yas, they, have, they become hopeless, he said, their tongue becomes long. He said, just like a cat, when he comes face to face with a dog, and there's nowhere to run and hide, and it's like, okay, this dog is going to eat me, the cat starts fighting the dog. He starts, he, the cat knows he's going to lose. There's no way. But it starts throwing. He's like, okay, I, I, I'm just going to go. I'm not going to go out like this. I'm going to go out with a, with a bang, right? Malik Pursi Chimi Guyad. The king asked, what is this man saying? What is he shouting about? So obviously the king is sitting on the top and then there's all these wuzara and then there's the people and then there's the man standing at the far so they don't have access to the king that close. He can't hear the man. And I think that's one of the reasons why the king didn't raise his voice because by, he, he wouldn't be able to hear it. This is before there's microphones, stuff like that. He just went like that. One of the wuzara, the wazir, is a minister. Is someone who's next to the king. And he's, he's a good wazir. He's a, he's a man of good character and good akhlaq. He says, Ay khudawand hami guyad. And khudawand here doesn't mean God. It means master, right? Khudawand, khudawand, the God. They use it in Persian poetry. Uh, it doesn't mean God itself. Khuda is God, right? Uh. So he said, oh, this asir, uh, he's saying, وَالْكَاذِمِينَ الْغَيْذِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ It's a reference to uh, Surah Al-Imran. There's a beautiful verse about the, that he's saying that, you know, those who people who stifle their, their anger, literally they eat their anger. When they're angry, they just, they, they, they just suffocate their anger. And they forgive people. Malik <laughs> Rahmat the king had mercy. Man, I just told him to kill him, and then he's saying, and, you know, those, those amazing people, what are they that they have? You know, when they're angry, they, 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 they you know, they take their anger down, right? This is the sunnah. And then and they forgive people. They have, you know, forgiveness. So the king had rahma. So he said, you know, no, no, don't kill him. Let him go. He's free to go. There's another wazir, another minister. And he, he doesn't like this wazir. He's the opposite. Like, there's an ethical one, there's anti. So one is a Democrat, one is a Republican, right? So it's like, in, in our country, that would be the, the style. 
ابنای جنس ما را نشاید در حضرت پادشاهان جز به راستی سخن گفتن people like us in other words we are the wazara we are the right hand and left hand of the king we are the people who are supposed to you know represent to the king the cases in its true form we shouldn't be lying about this like we shouldn't lie to the king about this issue we should only speak the truth to the master to our king in Malik ra dashnam dad wa nasaza gof this man just cussed out our king and he said foul stuff about him Malik rui az in sukhan dar ham awar he said the face of the king kind of like when you start he start frowning with this word that he said wa gof and he said on durugh wayr pasandida tar amad mara zin rast ke tu gofti the lie of this wazir i actually liked it more than the truth you just spoke. His lie was more beloved to my heart. I liked it than the truth you just spoke. Kerui on dar maslahati bud wa banoi in dar khubse because his lie had benefit. His lie had benefit. But your truth, the foundation of your truth was dirty. You know, in this culture, say, man, that was just dirty, right? That's exactly what he's saying. You were just dirty today. That was a dirty game you just played. Here's a man, you know, saved his life. He's going to change too, right? Because now the king forgave him. And so the thing is that also about these stories, one of the things that some of the lies that are permissible is that when two people are fighting, right, families feud and, and, and community feud, But people are, oh, I'm not going to talk to him again ever. He said, da, da, da. and then you're trying to make peace with him. He said, you know what? I was with so and so, and he said something. He was like, man, I miss so and so. He's such a good man. We used to do barbecue together. It was so funny. I miss his presence. He never said that. He said, really? Well, man, I miss him too, man. It was good. I don't know what happened. We just stopped fighting and got separated. He goes, yeah, that guy said, you know, he missed you. So then they start. He's taking the good news between them, and they become friends again. That is what's permissible, because you're you is maslaha. You're trying to put hearts together, right? But unfortunately, most people do the opposite now. You know, they make bohtan in stories about people. And one thing about bohtan that people have to be careful because a lot of people in our culture, they're unaware of bohtan. It's different from lying. It's different. Bohtan is when you make something up that never happened, right? You say, oh, I went to so and so, and he said. Da 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 about you. you. He never said that. You just made that up, right? Or you say, "Hey, oh, I saw your your daughter in a club. You know, there was you know stuck for a law. Or I saw your son drinking a beer, right? He never did. So here's here's the that the 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 sin, the sinfulness of that is absolutely is horrible. It's one of the most horrible things human being can do. And only people whose heart has turned black spiritually. And they're completely foul. They do that and filled with hatred. On the day of judgment, Allah will ask you. Remember that story you said that that boy was drinking alcohol. Yeah, because you can't lie on that day, right? Your tongue will say. Allah said, "Okay, what is that? I, I want you to make that happen. Make that a truth. Because certainly it wasn't. I didn't create that. I didn't. There was, it didn't happen." It wasn't part of the divine plan that manifested. So now, what I want you to do is to go ahead. We have time. The judgment is long, and this person is the humiliation of everybody looking and watching and seeing that what they did. Because on the day of judgment, one of the reason why the day of judgment is fifty thousand years, a hundred thousand years in narration, is because you have to watch the movie of your life, your entire movie. You have to watch it. And not only that, thousands of people that you know, everybody that you—they watch the movie of your life, everything that you have done, everything that we have done. We will see it in in better than HD in 4K, right? Because angels are recording. This is one of the things, and it's not out of hatred; it's out of love. How many pictures of our children we take? How many videos of our kids we have on our phones? Because we love them. Allah has so much love for us that He has angels recording us 24/7. But then, how, what do we do? In return, shameful acts. But they'll all be on the big screen, and everybody will see it. The prophets will see it. 
Your teachers will see it. Your parents will see it. Your grandparents will see it. Everything, everybody will see these movies of your life. And then you have to, oh, you made this bukhtan about this person? And the person doesn't know? And they're standing there, I thought you were my friend? Right? The humiliation just by itself, just by itself. You know, one of the poets said, Shabhai daraz bi ibadat chi konam. He said, these beautiful long nights, what am I going to do with these nights if I don't worship Allah? I don't worship Allah in these beautiful, because long nights are for, for worship. He said, because my tab, my tabi'ah, my nature is just used to, is ha- become habitual, like Aristotle said, if you do something, it becomes habitual, right? You do it until it becomes habitual. People who are habitual sinners, I am a sinner by habit. What can I do? And then he said that they say that he is Karim. This is what I heard. He's Karim, he's generous. And he forgives sins. That's what Allah is Karim, he forgives. He said, even if Allah forgives, how am I going to deal with the humiliation on that day? Just everybody watching me and seeing what I've done. And this is one of the things that Sheikh Hamza said that I think it, it was a game changer for me. It was paradigm shift. Like literally, this, this is, if this doesn't change your life, I don't know what will. I don't know what will. Because we are all sinners. Kullu ibn Adam khata'un. Every son and daughter of Adam they make mistakes. They sin. We're not angels. He said that Allah gives you an opportunity to edit your own movie of your life. The editing suite is in your hand. You can edit and cut any scene you don't like in your life. Say, you know, uh, no, I don't want that scene. I don't want anybody to see that, that scene. You can edit it by making Tawbah. Tawbah is the editing suite of the movie of your life. And if you make Tawbah from something, there were people who, I know a person in, in this community who was an alcoholic, and he changed his life. He abandoned alcohol, and he became a person. Every time I would see him, I would go to him. I said, make dua for me. And no, 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 I, I, I'm a sinner. You know, you make dua for me. I said, make dua for me. Because a, a, a thousand of my dua is not even one of your dua. Because I know you edited, you cut it. He hates alcohol. He hates the name of it. He has a hard time going to a liquor store. He can't even walk on the aisle in the grocery store that have alcohol. Because he made sincere toba. So on the day of judgment, nobody will see his drinking. Because he made toba. Sincere toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what they're trying to teach us in this. So if you make up a story, you have to make that come true on that day. So, yeah, so a, a lie that is, that is, there's benefit in it is better than this truth that has. So he says, Kharat Mandon Guftan, people of Kharat, people of knowledge and intellect and wisdom, they have said, Duruga Maslehat Omiz, Bek Rostif and Angiz. This is again another proverb from the Gulistan of Saudi. He said that a lie that has benefit is better than a truth that has fitna that brings fitna in the community. All right? So you have to be careful. And then he has a poem. Har kesha on konad ke uguyad, heif boshat ke juz nikuguyad. Whoever is in that position, and there are people, this is the position of not just the king. Again, the position of being near your father, right? The, the, the one that's close to the father, and their siblings. And then you, you, you want to you wanna say good things about them. Right? The person who is in a company, you're close to the CEO. The p- person who works at the, at the masjid, right? And then they have people. So if you're close to the one who makes the decision maker, right? If you're close to the king, he said, he said, it would be very unfortunate if they speak anything that, other than beauty. They should, they should just speak beautifully and say beautiful things and elevate people and not put people down. 
So then he has Bartaka Iwan Fredun Nabishtabud. And the talk is in is on the Faridun was the great king of Persia. A lot of people think that my father named me after that because a lot of the Freyduns in Persia, they're named after him, but he didn't name me after the king. He named me after uh, Freydun Mushiri, who was one of the last great poets of, of Iran, uh, one of my favorite poets. Uh, so he named me after him, uh, this, this beautiful poet. He, he died, I think, maybe 20 years ago, so 20 some years ago. Uh, anyways, um, so he said, it's written on this king's palace. جهان ای برادر نماند بکس دلن در جهان آفرین بند بست So جهان this world oh my brother is not going to remain for anyone in other word one of the thing that uh, the great master uh, of spirituality of Balkh uh, he was a prince of Balkh and he uh, he let go and went on the path of asceticism. We talked about it, about his story. Uh, and he he got to this place, and this man was living in this really a big mansion. And he said, wow, well, whose house is it? He goes, it's my, uh, he said, uh, he said uh, whose caravan sarai is this? Caravan sarai used to be like the hotels back then. People used to go and spend the night and then travel and go to the next destination. So they didn't have the hotel system like we have now. They had the zawiyas for the spiritual path, uh, and then they had the, the caravans ride. I said, who caravans ride? I said, what, are you stupid or something? This is, this is our house. He said, really? You lived here before? He goes, uh, before that, my grandfather used to live here. So what happened? He goes, he died, and we're living here. So what about before that? He goes, my grandfather bought it from the head of the Kabila. You know, he sold it. He used to live here. He said, what happened? To he said, yeah, then he died, and he left. So he said, he said, I'm telling you, it's a caravan's ride. Everybody comes, spend a few days here, and then they leave. <laughs> so that's the reality of the world. So he's saying, oh, my brother, this world has no wafa. It's not, nobody can take anything with them, right? You only go with your shroud of dead. Dilan dar jahan afarin bandabas. Connect your heart to the one who has created the jahan, the world, in bas. Period. That's it. So instead of putting, putting the junior in your heart, no, this, you can't put the junior in your heart. Put the creator of the junior in your heart. Don't lean in this world, right? The world was just relax, chill, you have a long time. It's all right, just enjoy your life, do as thou wealth, right? This is the new Alistair Crowley and the Crowley out in, in, in you know, like, what like Jay-Z has the, the t-shirt, do as thou well, do whatever you want, you know, you only live once. Yeah, you live, you live once, but it should be a life of meaning. But this is not the life. You know, out of the five lives that we have, this is the shortest life of all the five lives. We have the, the pre-creation, the pre-world, which is we were souls in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He created our soul. That's one life. That's a long life. We were there. Allah knows millennia, right? And then we had the, the, life of, uh, uh, the life of the junior, right? And then we have the life of the barzakh, that when we die, we go into the grave, and there's a life in the barzakh. People, you know, Adam, alayhi salam, has been in the barzakh. Since then, all of the, 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 his children have been in the barzakh till now, right? Whoever dies, we go in the barzakh. It's an interspace between this world and the next. And then the day of judgment. 50,000 years, 100,000 years, just a day of judgment, right? That's another life. And then the, the next life, the, the final abode, paradise, inshallah, for all of us, or those who need to be purified in the fire, right? So all, this dunya is the shortest, 60, 70 years, right? That's what the Prophet ﷺ said, that the average of my ummah is between 60 to 70 years. So can you live 100 years? It still is nothing. So he's saying, don't lean in this world because it's, it's, not, it's not long. It, this is not long. You know, Saadi talked about the first session, if you remember. He said, don't lean in the dunya because it has no pillar. Because it just fall. So don't, you always have to be vigilant. And one thing about animals, they're always vigilant. Right? This is a Shaqiq al-Balkhi. They, he, he, uh, they ask him, he said, how did you learn muraqiba? Like, so he was mentioning one of his teachers. They said that the, the people of spirituality, 
most of them, they learn muraqibah from cats. And muraqibah is like to be just instead of awareness on, you know, your focus is one. And that focus is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obviously, right? But he said, hey, we learn it. he said, I learned it from a cat. He said, how do you learn muraqibah from a cat? He said, there was a mouse hole. And I saw a cat waiting for the mouse to come out and just, and just take the mouse. He said, this cat, the eyes will not swirl, focus on this, and ready to attack. The moment, I said, if a cat can do that for a mouse, I can't do that for Allah. I can't have muraqibah for Allah. And that's how they came. And everything is an example in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, don't, don't just chill and relax in the world because this world has given, has brought, you know, has given, you know, raised so many people like you before and killed so many people and, and ate it. This is the nature of the world. It raised, you know, you get raised in this world, you eat the fruit of the world. You know, the, the, the food of the world, the water, all of these stuff. And then, okay, get, and then raise you, and then boom. And then it kills you, and then it eats you back. So he says, this is the nature of this dunya. When it's time for you to go, the melody of death comes. It's a beautiful word. The melody of death comes. He said, does it matter if you die on the, on the concrete or on the dirt or on the... Or on a five-star bed, you're gonna die. You're gonna die. Does, it wouldn't make a difference. So don't be deluded by the things of this world. All right. Now, these stories generally, the way I because it's the live stream is is on the other side of the the, the, the U.S. Um, generally, I get the feedback from the attendees to see what they think. But we'll we'll, we'll continue. So if anybody has feedback on these, they can they can send an email to me, inshallah, and I would love to. Uh, look at it and see your take on these. So again, uh, advice to the kings, to the leaders, to the head of the household, all of them, you can apply these teachings. So we'll go to, uh, um, so I want to be on time, maybe, oh man. I don't think you can finish this. I'll do one more. Uh, he says, uh, again, we are in Bab Awal, first Bab, and Sirat Apat Shahan, on the uh, characteristics of the kings, Hekaya number 12. So he says, Yaki has muluk bi insaf. One of the muluk bi insaf is, is uh, what he's talking about is a king, a leader that is oppressor. He's an oppressive king that, that, that is doing zulm, that is doing, uh, that oppressing his people. Parsa is is a zahir. Someone who is a person, a man of Allah, someone who is detached from the dunya and connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As ibadat ha kudam fazil tarast. He said, which of the ibadah of worship Allah it has the most preference with Allah? Like, what is the best ibadah I could do amongst all of the ibadahs, all of the worship? So this, this king who is a, a zalim, an oppressor, horrible king, he's asking, which is the best ibadah for him to do from this zahid. Goft, he replied, He said, for you, the best worship is qaybula, you know, this afternoon nap, you know, sunnah to do an afternoon nap. You don't have to do it. He said, really, it's just, he said, so people are free from your oppression for a few minutes when you're sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> and there are some people, you know, it's like, man, I wish you would sleep more, right? Because when they're awake, they're just wreak havoc on the world. So in any case, so this is an, his, uh, his uh, trying to teach us now a malik that is, that is an oppressor, that's a bad malik. You know, how do you deal with that? Zalim ira khufte didam neem ruz, guftam in fitnas, khabash burdabe. He said, I saw a zalim, a, a person, of, an oppressor, uh, and he was sleeping in the, in the, early afternoon, because it's sunnah to sleep out in the early afternoon after dhuhr. It's a sleep, it's called qaylula, and it's sunnah to do it. It's actually very healthy. They actually did a study uh, that uh, an afternoon nap, uh, even as short as uh, 30 to 45 minutes, it actually is good for your health to do it. Obviously, we don't need that to know because our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi everything that he did, there's wisdom in it as well. You get the reward of sunnah, and you get the benefit of good health, if you can. 
He said, I saw this oppressor sleeping in the middle of the day. I said, this man is a man of fitna, of trials and tribulation. It's better that he keeps sleeping. One ke khabash behtar az bidari ast. Oh, to the one whose sleep is better than his state of awakening. The one whose sleep is better than his awakened state. On chanon bad zindagani murdabe. A life like that, a bad life like that, is better to, to be dead than to be alive. Right? So, so the poets, they say that there's, there's the two people that they, they say that death is better than their life. One is the one who's an oppressor. Because they, when they're alive, they just keep oppressing people. And the other one, uh, uh, those people who have no benefit for themselves and for others. Like they just have no benefit for anybody, for anybody. He said, "If if atash pe yo an nakhle ki bibard mikutar, right? A tree that is dead, barren, and dry, with no leaf, nothing. He said it's better to use that for firewood. You know, at least you can use it and start a fire and cook something with it than have this tree that is dead, ugly. There's there's no benefit in it. And people like that tree. He's saying that." It's not a curse, uh, but it's a thing. This is another nice one. I like it. It's, uh, it's still the first chapter, Hekaya number uh, 29. One of the wazara, one of the, the wazirs, the minister, went to Zunun al-Misri, who was a, uh, a spiritual master, a scholar, and, and a man of the heart, and a wise man. Wahimat khos in, in he asked for advice. That's what Muhammad Khos means here. Uh, that he said that listen, uh, day and night I'm busy with the khidmah of the Sultan, of the king. He's a wazir, he's a minister, he's a right hand man of the Sultan. He said, day and night I'm, I'm just occupied with, this, with the service of the Sultan. And I have always hoped that he would give me good, that he would, you know, good would come out from him to me, and he would do good. And, Everything that's good that, that, that would happen from the king. Was Aqubatash Tarsan. Aquba means that when you get punished for a sin, right? If you do something wrong and they punish you, that's Aqubat. So, and then he said that I'm afraid that he might, if I make a mistake, he will punish me for my sin, for my disobedience. Well, I just fear that a lot. But I'm hopeful always that he would show goodness and, and beauty. Zunun begins to go. Zunun and Misri, this wise man, start crying. And he said, "Agar man Khudai ra azza wa jal chenin peristi dami ki tu Sultan ra az jumlei sadiqan mibari." If I worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the way that you are serving your Sultan, I would be amongst the Sadiqs, amongst the elite of the world. And this is one thing that people really need to take into consideration. Sometimes we actually do more for people than we do for Allah. Like literally people do, they have more fear of their boss than they have of Allah. They have more hope in, in, uh, in science than they have in healing from Allah. The, our first thing, the first door that we go, because Allah has closed all the doors. There's only one door that's open, the door of Allah. You go to Allah, and after that, everything else that you do, if you're sick, when you go to the doctor, you know that he's a, he's a, that's a sabab. Allah is the one who heals. Allah has, you have to go to this doctor. It's part of the, how Allah created it. But you have to believe that this, this is from Allah. The medicine, when you take for healing, that medicine, Allah is putting the healing in the medicine. He can heal you without the medicine as well. But the sunnah of Allah is that you have to use the asbab. You have to use the asbab. This is the, this is the way he made the world. Right? But he can heal you without medicine. Simple as that. He can do that. But he says, no. Take the medicine. I'll heal you through that medicine. This is how Allah created. We don't believe medicine heals. Part of our aqidah. You, you, you can't say, oh, I have a headache. Tylenol is going to fix me. Tylenol is going to fix me. Iznillah. Allah is going to fix through this Tylenol. He is the one who heals. And he put the healing in that. Right? 
So he said, I will be amongst the Siddiq if I worship Allah the way you are honoring your king. Now, Siddiq is, why didn't he use Abi a Wali, right? Why Siddiq? Why not a martyr, a shaheed, a Wali? There's four categories of people the Quran mentions, right? And that's the four categories. Allah says, be amongst these four categories. Like if you you know, love them, try to be them. There's one that you can't, it's closed already, the door. So, مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ Amongst the who? It, this is about the Day of Judgment. Be amongst with the Prophets. We would like to be around the Prophets. We can't be Prophets, right? But we should strive to be with the Prophets, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and other Prophets. And then, Siddiqeen, the truthful. That's why Abu Bak, a Siddiq, has the highest muqam. خَيْرَ الْخَلْقِ اللَّهِ he is the best of Allah's creation after the prophets. Abu Bakr Siddiq. He is the best of Allah. He is a Siddiq. He is the highest maqam. Right? Now, Umar ibn Khattab is a shaheed. He is a shaheed of mihrab. He is a martyr of the mihrab. Everybody, salihin are the righteous people. So a Nabi, a Nabi, a prophet, has a Siddiq inside of him has a shaheed inside of him, and has a salih inside of him. So all of those are in a nabi. A nabi is a siddiq, is a shaheed, is a salih. All of them. A siddiq has a rank of a shaheed and a salih. And a shaheed has a rank of a salih as well. But a salih is not a shaheed. A salih is not a siddiq. Got it? So that's, in, in a, and a siddiq is not a prophet. Right? So he said, I'll be amongst the siddiq because those are the people who have the highest maqam with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so Garna Umi Dubi Murahat Ranj Poi Darwish Bar Falak Budi. Wa Wazir as Khuda Bitter Sidi Hamchanon Kaz Malak Kamchanon Kaz Malik Malak Budi. So the first one is Malik, the second one is Malak. What is with a Kasra? One is the second one is with a Fatha. Malik uh, means the the king, Malak, means the angel. So he said, if the wazir had the same feeling towards Allah as he had towards the king, he would become an angel. He would become an angel. Okay. So um, we'll do one more. It's 3.55 and we'll close. Uh, sorry. Maybe we can finish these on the next session, the next one. So the next one is a bab of Darwishan and the akhlaq of Darwish. The reason why he does that, he starts with the kings, then he goes to the citizens. The relationship between the two, the powerful and the powerless, how to deal with each other. One of the, the, the people, of the head of the tribes, a learned man, he went to a parsa, a zahid. He went to him, a person who was detached from the world. He said, چگوی در حق فلان آبد که دیگران در حق وی به تعنه سخنها گفتن What do you say about this worshiper, this ordinary worshiper like us, about him? So he says فلان which means so and so. About so and so that people are saying really bad things about him. What do you say about him? He said, گفت بر ظاهرش عیب نمی بینم و در باطنش غیب نمی دان. He said, I don't see any deficiency in his outward, and I don't know anything about his inward. I can't see, I can't see his heart. Allah has, Allah has told us to judge people by the outward, not by the inward, because we don't know the state of the inward. If somebody's a monafiq, but they're praying in the masjid, we should just assume they're good people and they're praying in the masjid, right? Always have husn of dhan, have good opinion of people. You know, a lot of people say, oh, he's not a Muslim. Why is he not a Muslim? Well, because he's white or he's black. Is that the criteria now that we can say? Everybody that you meet, they should just, you should just think they're, they're Muslim. Honestly, you should. I mean, I, I've, I was shocked to see some people and in, in one, one of the guys we, at, the, at the store, there were some Muslim guys, it's a true story, you know, and, and just try, on the night of Ramadan, he was trying to flirt with this girl in a Muslim in a, in a in a suit store, trying to buy a suit, and beautiful white American girl and blonde eyes, blue hair, and he's he was doing that. And so, anyways, 
and then uh, there's a conversation between him and his friend. He goes, "Man, isn't isn't tomorrow Ramadan?" And like, and and then the girl says, "Are you guys Muslim?" And and, and he said, "Yes, uh, yeah, we are." He goes, is, is, "When is Ramadan? Is it tomorrow or the day after?" And they said, "It's tomorrow." It's, oh, Subhanallah! I'm looking forward, Mashallah, for Ramadan. And the guy's like, "Wait a second, you Muslim?" He goes, "Yeah, I'm from Bosnia." And she was like, her Arabic was sort of like, just so you think that like, you should always assume people are Muslim unless they they tell you they're not a Muslim. So this is a, a really, you know, we have, should have good opinion of people. So he's saying, I have a good opinion of his outward because I didn't see anything wrong with it. And I can't see his inward. Allah is not allowing us to see the inward of the people. We are not judging by the inward. Parsodon kinik mat inkar ingar. So he says, whoever has the clothing of, of a of a zahid, in other words, their outward looks good, just assume that they're good, and that's it. And you don't know what's inside of it. And this motasib is a very beautiful word in, in, uh, in Arabic and Persian. Motasib is, is the person who is the religious police, especially in Ramadan, they have it. it traditionally, in the Muslim country, they would go make sure people are fasting and they don't eat in, uh, on the streets, right? So, but he says, a motasib, the religious police, he has no ruling inside your house. So if you're, if you're not fasting inside your house, the religious police cannot come in into your house. They don't have the right. It's your private that's protected. So he's saying that this is the house of a man inside their heart. Leave them to Allah. Allah will judge on that, that day. He didn't ask us to judge them. And khalas, just go by the outward. And one other thing with, with, the, with this society is that a lot of the things that needs to be in the house is becoming public domain now. That those things that are in the house is it's like you know in, in this language in this culture they have a proverb they say don't bring out your dirty laundry out in front of others right don't bring your dirty laundry don't talk about stuff that is supposed to be in the house one of the scary hadith is about the 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 prophet ﷺ telling the sahaba that don't you know shouldn't fornicate on the street corner like on the and they, like, how could somebody do that? He said, if you talk about what you did in the bedroom on the street, it's as though you have done it. Right? This whole concept of sexuality remains in the bedroom and it doesn't come out. Whatever people do in their bedroom is nobody's business, but they shouldn't bring it out. Now, unfortunately, it's a culture that everybody, whatever, ha they have to come out and proclaim that. And all these young Muslim youth, they're confused. They think that this is the norm. That's not the norm. It wasn't like that. When I went to high school, you couldn't talk about these stuff because if you did, you would be you would be attacked. You'd be beaten up, right? So, but it's, it has changed over the past twenty, you know, quarter of a century. Things a lot, a lot of the stuff has changed. But for Muslims, we shouldn't even be talking about these things. If somebody wants to talk about, it, say, listen, whatever, whatever you are, whatever you do, it's between you and your Lord and yourself. I, you know, hey, I don't want to talk about it. So those are the things, that is what he's saying, that we should just judge by the outward and not by the inward. And inshallah, it's 401, and we respect the time. There's a, a couple more in here in, um, in the last page. I will do this, inshallah, next time. This is actually one of my favorite ones, the, the, the Sufi Sheikh and the Thief uh, story. So we'll do that next time, and inshallah, we'll do uh, uh, a couple of other from different, another chapter from the other chapters, there's, there's, there's different chapters in the Gulistan as we talked about, and we will try to do at least like one from each chapter, so you get a taste of what Saadi is talking about, what is his advice, so he's, then the, next, the chapter on love is really amazing, um, you know, uh, old age love, which, uh, what we call, in this culture, they call it midlife crisis, uh, which actually is a bad name, it should be end of life crisis, because you, people ruin their life. Uh, you know, I, I, I know somebody in our community that came and um, I said, where's uncle, you know, so-and-so. 
Um, I mean, he's pretty old because I call him uncle, and I'm pretty old, you know. <laughs> so he said, oh, uncle left, and he got married, and he's wearing shorts and on the beach in this country, and da 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 I'm like, uncle has grandchildren, doesn't he? Yeah, the grandchildren are in high school. I'm like, uncle is in his late 60s at least, right? He goes, yeah. But I don't know, it's mid midlife crisis. Says, that ain't no midlife crisis. That's end of life crisis. Like, how long do you expect to live, right? So if, you know, the thing with, 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 with these, uh, unfortunately, with the, this culture, you, you're never safe, right? It's, it's always like people can, you, you can, don't, don't ever, don't ever say, oh, I'm not, gonna, nothing's going to happen to me. I'm fine. My iman is strong. And that's, those are the people that would lose it. All of those people say, no, no, nothing. They're so arrogant about it. Just be humble. Say, you know, Allah help me. Allah, you know, inshallah, I'm doing my best. And try to stay away from people that will take you. The worst thing in life young, for the young people, I know there's a lot of youngsters with miftah. The worst thing in your life is, number one, is your friends. Either the best or the worst. Your friend can take you to hell or literally be a partner to take you out of the hell and put you in paradise. If you have good friends. If you have bad friends, you are bad, but tarbuat as more bad. You know, Mawlana, you know, that, that a, a bad friend is worse than a poisonous snake. And that's the reality of it, because a poisonous snake, obviously, it hurts your body. But he said the bad friend, it hurts your body and your faith and your, your religion. So al-mar'u ala dini khalili, the Prophet said a person is in the religion of his friend. So that's number one thing. And number two is this, is these gadgets. If you can control this, don't let it control you. If you can control this, you're a successful person. You're amongst the, the people of Sa'ada. But if it's controlling you, it's kind of like, you know, the person they say that, Mi barat har su ke khawhat asp khawbalu dara. He said that the, the horse takes in any direction it wants the sleepy rider. If you're a sleepy rider, it's the horse that takes you in directions. But if you're a vigilant rider, it's you that's controlling the horse. If you can control this horse, then you're in good shape, you know, where it's not controlling you. Uh, other than that, I think, you know, inshallah, everybody will be fine. But those, those are the two main things. And inshallah, these lessons are just for life. Reflect on them. See what it means to you, what it means in your life what it means in your mosque, what it means in your household, what it means in your society. Most of the problems of the Muslim world, this Gulistan of Saadi used to be on the table for every president in France as a gift when they took office after Saadi came out. They had that for, for, for centuries. That's, that was a gift. Everyone who came in, they had to read the Gulistan, the, the, the chapter, not only just the chapter on the king, but the chapter on the Darwish as well, on the, on the citizen and on the poor people uh, of the country. And that's why they use this. And then we have another way. We have John Stuart Mills. We have other style of governing, you know, the uh, uh, Machiavelli style as well. And we, have, we are seeing that. This is, the, you know, is what uh, Bashar al-Assad is doing in, in Syria. That, 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 that's another style. They pick up those styles. They don't pick up this this style of, of teaching which is founded in wisdom and mercy. In wisdom and mercy. And this is one of the stories <coughs> in the Gulistan. And we'll end. He talks about a uh, Anushirwan Adil. Anushirwan was one of the, the kings of Persia. And he was, he was famous for the Adil, for the just king. He said that one day he went uh, hunting. And they, they hunted a, a, a deer. And they brought it, they slaughtered it, and they barbecued it. As they were grilling it, and they said they realized they didn't bring any salt. And food without salt, there's no taste in it, right? You have to have salt. So Anushirwan sent uh, one of the, the, the commander told his one of the soldiers to go get some salt from, the, from one of the stores in the, in, the, in the city. So he was getting on his horse to go get salt. Anushirwan called him. And he said, make sure that you pay for the salt when you, when you get it from the store. And the soldier said, oh, my master, oh, the king. What is it? What is a little bit of salt that I take from him and bring for the king if I don't pay for it? 
and he said, the foundation, and Shirwan tells the soldiers, and it's a beautiful example, and you would see how, and just look at Pakistan, look at Afghanistan, uh, look at uh, all of the Muslim countries, just look at them, and you would see that how true this example. He said, all oppressions start very small, and they keep building, and they keep building, and they keep building. He said, if Saadi then comes in, he goes, Saadi says, if a soldier of Anushirwan gets an egg from a store, the lieutenant will get the chicken. And then the commander will get the lamb. And then he, will go, he said, by the time he gets to the commander in chief, he will take the entire village apart and take everybody's wealth, food, and everything. But it all starts with salt. Just a little bit worthless salt, right? So he says, no, pay for it. So we don't, we don't put the foundational break of oppression. We don't want to put that. And unfortunately, in many of our countries, not the foundational is there, but the walls have been built and the castles have been built. And, 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 take it, and reversing this is only one way. It's only one way. It's through ilm. It's through knowledge. It's through education. And people, once they come, see, this book was taught in, in a lot of the Muslim countries non-Muslim countries, Hindu, Sikhs. The, I met Sikhs that have more Gulistan memorized than I do. Literally, they have when they were like five, six years old, they memorized it. So there are people, and they implemented this in their lives. So if we implement these things, we can change, we can bring a revolution of akhlaq, of character. That's what's needed. There's too many revolutions around the world. Every Muslim, everywhere you go is destroyed. Like you can't, we don't even have a vacation spot. For Muslim, everywhere you go, it's like you know you want to go and you want to see. It's just we need a you know. Iqbal said, he said, "Tere khudi me agar inqilab ho payda, ajab nahi hai ke charsu badal jaye." That if there's a revolution within yourself, if there's an internal revolution, the revolution of the heart, an ethical revolution, it is then that your surrounding will change. You can't change your surrounding by force. But you can change it with love. Raghab al-Isfahani said, if love exists amongst people, then who needs justice? You really don't need justice if there's love. We, justice is needed in absence of love. And we're living in a society that there's no love. People have no love. Their most support goes to Pakistan and Afghanistan from immigrants who live in America and in UK and in Europe than the people there. And those people are much wealthier than the people who are sending from here. Much wealthier. They have more money. But they don't help their own people. They see them, suffer, they don't care. And that's what we need to change. We need to have an internal revolution of the heart, a revolution, an ethical revolution that we change and bring these teachings to life. And we will see within a generation we can change our societies, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Next week is the last session, inshallah, and we will close this chapter on the Gulistan.